Hello, my name is uh, Joe Kane from Celtic Revival and I would like to offer you some understanding about Celtic traditions and Irish traditions and Halloween, Samhain, the Celtic New Year and its origins. I'm here at the Celtic Revival space, we're in Medford, Massachusetts, we run a Celtic business and I'm here to offer a little story of such. Behind me is a painting by Parry Conway, an artist in Galway, of the Neolithic carvings that were done in Ireland maybe five and a half thousand years ago. Uh, these people who did these carvings built old structures to mark time and observe time on how to watch it or how to look at it. Today we're on the Roman road, straight and narrow, not connected to anything, disconnected from what's beneath us and what's above in most cases. Uh, so I would like to explain something about the Celtic traditions and the spirit of Celtic traditions. I have a Celtic knot here and its origins really go back to the manuscripts of the monks from the 5th to the 9th century. Things changed in the 10th century of course, we were Romanized very much. But back then when they built these Neolithic structures and carved these big carvings behind us, they were observing time and finding spirit. And in Ireland, they mark time moving around a centre place. A hill called Ishnock in County Westmeath is the mythic centre of Ireland. There's a hill there that marks the mythic centre. And right in the centre, there's a stone called Alnum Wyddon, the stone of division. And from there was where the great old sacred tree grew, the tree of life, having seven branches and seven roots. It grew 26 miles high. And they marked time moving around that tree. And when they marked time building these old structures, they marked it having four corners and four cross quarters. Many of the Celtic knots that you would see would have this on it. These would have been the equinoxes, solstices, and these four cross quarters are known as the Celtic fire festivals. This is Imbalock or St. Bridget's Day on February 1st, 2nd. This is Beltane. Beltina, the fires of the sun god Bel at May Day. This is Lunasa, August the 1st. And here we have Halloween, the Celtic New Year. Now for these really incredible wise people that observed time moving in a great big wheel, they saw that there was no spirit chasing time. That the only place you find spirit is finding your way back to the center of time where the old tree grew, to where all things comes together. There was new beginnings from the east, there is abundance in the south, the fields are full, the wisdom of the day is done, the setting sun in the west, and the inner contemplation in the darkness of the north. That is your own inner journey. But as you see, the Celtic knot is an infinity knot. Time is endless, it's an endless journey. We can be chasing it all we want, but you know yourself, there's only so far of the road we can go. While they watched it, having the equinoxes and solstices, these four cross quarters, these were the two major festivals. Beltane, the 1st of May, Beltane, the support of Sun God Bel. And here, Halloween, the Celtic New Year, or Samhain. When they observe time, it has two halves. It has a light half and a dark half, a day and a night, life and death, the seen world and the unseen world. That's why in Irish tradition, the fairies would always be very much interactive. Or the Day of the Dead, if you want to go to Mexico, or many other traditions would celebrate the same traditions but they watched it moving all around in a wheel. Here we've got the winter solstice. New Grange, a site that was built 5,000 years ago. When the sun rises on the 21st of December, it lights up the chamber once a year, celebrating rebirth, more light coming back into the world. And on the 1st of February, it's now St. Bridget's Day, is Imbalock, or Gira, it was known as an Irish tradition. These were agricultural festivals, Lunasa on August the 1st and uh, February and they were brought in for the agricultural cycle, the balance out, of course, the other two. Uh, of course, for many of you, maybe cousins in Australia and all that were brought up in Ireland many years ago, we used to celebrate it by... The biddies came out, and they used to weave these straw hats in Ireland, and people used to dress up and bring biddy to the house on the 1st of February. And 2nd of February now it's celebrated, but it's a three-day festival, really. And when the biddies would come out, they would come and they would bring breed og and straw doll 
all dressed in pure white. She was made of straw as well. And they'd welcome Bridget into the house on the 1st of February. And when they welcomed Bridget in, first they brought Bridget in and they put her on the right hand side of the fireplace. Then all the biddies would come in and they'd dance around a polka set into the sun. And when you didn't see a polka set dancing, it's dancing in, turn around, back to the corner, dance in, round, back to the corner, and vice versa, it moves around all the time. So it's like an old set dance. But anyway, on Bridget's night, they brought Biddy in. And then the last thing that they brought into the house was a straw ring, uh, maybe about two and a half feet in diameter with three woven crosses, also made of straw. And when they would bring that into the house, they'd put it on the centre of the floor of the house and they'd lift it up. And the youngest child in the house, whether it was a baby, would have been passed through the ring. And then the next oldest, from the youngest to the oldest. And for the older people, they'd put the ring on the floor and you would step through it and they would bring the ring up through the body. So when they, everybody stepped through the ring, then they danced out of the house and they went on to the next house. It was a great lively tradition, of course, in the midst of winter in the dark time of the year. And here we've got the spring equinox. There's a site called Schlieff Macaulay in County Mead that is a marking on the sunrise for the spring and autumn equinox. We have the same sunrise, of course. So up here is Beltane. Beltane are the fires of Sun God Bell and it was known as a fire festival because every fire in Ireland was extinguished the night before May Day and everybody lived in darkness. And the first fire was rekindled on the hill of Ishnock and the hill of Ishnock can be seen from the four high seats of the king in Ireland. You've got Tara to the east, you've got Crucan in the west, you've got Amain Maka in the north, Navin Fort in County Armagh, and Cashel in the south. And when the big fire was lit in the centre, sure enough, each of the four corners would rekindle their fire, and every fire in the country got rekindled from that flame. Then we have the height of summer, the uh, summer solstice. Here is Lunasa. It was a time for all the horse races. It was for the old god Lu, the grain, the coming of grain, celebrating the golden of the harvest that has come. Uh, all the horse races, of course, would be held, fair days, everything, because the animals are fat and fed in the fields after having the height of the summer. And they would send them off before the coming of the winter. And here we've got the autumn equinox, again, in alignment with Schlieff and the Kaliak, or what they know as Lock Crew. And then here we come down to Samhain, Halloween, the Celtic New Year. It's a time of celebrating and honouring the dead, the people that came before us. It's just time to recognise them and call them out. In the Christian calendar, of course, we celebrate it as All Souls, All Saints Day. But in the old tradition, of course, it was a time when we honoured the dead. For they were very close and are still very close to us, for they live at the other side of the wheel. So as you look at the cycle of a Celtic knot, you have rebirth on the 21st of December. On the 1st of February is dedication. You will dedicate yourself to something like a seed will dedicate itself in the ground. And it shows promise in the spring, all things turn green. I suppose that's maybe why we celebrate St. Patrick's Day, the green of promise, the coming of new life. And May Day, Beltane, a festival of unification, where the dark meets the light. Where the old god Carnullus comes forth and marries the Queen of May. And when he marries the Queen of May, he becomes the Green Man. I'll get back into the Green Man over here. He's the Green Man for half the year. The masculine in harmony with nature, a place of outer action. So Beltane, May Day. On the height of summer, the fields are full. It's a time of joy. The sun is highest in the sky, the fields are abundant, everything is in full growth. Over here is transformation. In the natural cycle it's from flower to fruit. We transform ourselves, whatever you dedicate yourself to the 1st of February, transforms to become something else. Very fruitful, of course. Harvest in the autumn equinox, and back here to Samhain, Halloween, peace, where you make peace with all that's dead and gone where we cross from a place of outer action to go into a place of inner contemplation that would be living with the natural cycle of time, living in harmony with the earth and the surroundings, the natural cycle. So there was rebirth, dedication, promise, unification, joy, transformation, harvest and peace. Honouring time was very, very important. In most cases these days in the Christian calendar or Catholic calendar anyway, they, people would bless themselves. 
but for the older tradition, you would honour the four corners. Again, new beginnings come to us each day of the week from the east, so you face the east and you welcome those new beginnings. You face the south, you count your blessings, the fields are full, the abundance in your own life. The wisdom of the day is done in the west, the setting sun, and the darkness or inner contemplation, your own inner journey. There is as much to be done inside than outside, even we're very, very outer these days. So once you recognize and turn and face the four corners, you will find yourself right dead in the center. And in the center is where the old tree grows. The tree that sheltered seven forms of life, insect, fish, mammal, plant, animal, man and bird. Here we connect with the roots, with seven generations past, our ancestors. In the middle is action, the present, and the branches reach out into the future. The branches are the seven generations that come after us. In Irish tradition, these three worlds was known as the spirit of Ireland, are known as Bamba, being the underworld. Eru, where the name Era came from, is the seven forms of life that live beneath the tree. And Folda, never too much wrote about, because it's yet to come. So I just want to pass this along, no matter where you go, there you are. So the celebration of Halloween, coming up in a two weeks time, is to honour the people that came before us, to remember them, and call them into the circle in our lives. For the blood that flows through our lives isn't really all our own. The blood that flows through our body belongs to the people who comes before us. Now this tradition was sort of handed down in early Celtic spirituality, in the coming of Christianity they celebrated the Wheel of Time. And you can see that by putting away this Celtic knot. And here I have a, the cross of the scriptures from Clan Mac Nye's. This would have been about a 9th century cross. And any of the crosses in Ireland that were carved before the 10th century, of course, would have the circle, which is time. It would have the four corners and it would have these four cross quarter markings, if you can see it there. They would represent the old fire festivals. And on the Celtic cross you never had anyone crucified, for in the centre is where you find the spirit, where we become one with all things. It's where the number seven is sacred, for if we honour the four corners, we find ourselves in the centre, and we reconnect with the earth beneath, the middle world, and what's yet to come. I wish you all a happy Samhain, blessed Samhain, and uh, hope you honour the people that came before you. And intention comes from the roots, the people that came before us. Action is what we do with ourselves in the present time. The future is yet to be told. The music playing is uh, Owen Daglan from Dingle. He's a composer, a piper in Dingle. A great man indeed. I'm sure he's online. And uh, my name is Joe from Celtic Revival in Medford, Massachusetts. We're online, CelticRevival.com. Even though I've only got some of the stuff online. But uh, I just wanted to share this about Samhain. So that we might have a better understanding about Celtic, Celtic traditions and what it's all about. No matter where you go, there you are. Thanks for looking and uh, that's the look in life. And it's time we made a difference. Thank you. So where's my little chime? Three bells.